This episode is about minutes 96 through 100 of The Empire Strikes Back with Pete and Alex from Star Wars Minute. Hello there, and welcome to Star Wars Music Minute, where we celebrate the music and sound of Star Wars five cinematic minutes at a time. I'm Chrysanthi Tan, feel free to call me Xanthi, and today is all about minutes 96 through 100 of The Empire Strikes Back, in which Han gets frozen in carbonite, and there are there is a, a one-sided exchange of I love you. In the season premiere of this show, I kind of teased this episode coming up because I saved a bit of footage for this episode, so I will unleash it upon upon you all um, today. <laughs> Pete and Alex don't know, but... Um, well, let me just introduce Pete and Alex first, and then we'll get to the footage. Um, hello. Everyone knows who you are. Pete, the Do retailer, that. Alex Robinson from Star Wars Minute. Um, thanks for coming on for this set of minutes. Of course. <clears throat> delighted to be us. back. And delighted to get to see a little bit of The Empire Strikes Back. I haven't watched that yeah. in a thousand years. Seems like it. Perhaps a nine minutes, years. <laughs> Eight yeah. or nine years, according yeah. to your podcast. A long time, either way long time. Mm. Yeah, mm. I heard your, I listened to your Empire Strikes Back minutes, I don't know, 2014 is probably when you recorded them-ish. Uh, and I was listening to these minutes to see what you had to say about these minutes back then. Mm. Um, <clears throat> so it's a little, it's fresh in my memory. All right, I'm, I'm going to ask if I talked about a thing then. Okay. A little, little bit down the road, not quite okay. yet. But. <laughs> okay. Well, one of the things that you mentioned and back eight years ago on your show is wanting to hear the onset sound for this yeah. without the music and everything. So I have that for you today. Really? Yes. Nice. Wow. Yeah. That's um, exciting. It is exciting. It is. It's very exciting. Um, so when we get to that spot, which starts about like 40 seconds into this minute, then, uh, then we'll take a pause to watch the to watch and listen to the onset sound version without music, and then mm. we will uh, hear what the final product was. All right. Yeah, it's exciting, exciting cool. times. This is. <laughs> oh my gosh, the, there's there's like a minute in this set of minutes that is just unreal. Like the way that the music goes through it. Oh, I just can't mm. can't believe it. It's it's so good, um, <laughs> but. On that note, let's just listen to the beginning of these minutes. What's going on, buddy? You're being put into carbon freeze. What if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. The Empire will compensate you if he dies. You mean Han and Leia? (laughs) Okay, I know what you're going to say. This is obviously not the original because Tamora Morrison's voice is in it. Yes. Mm -hmm. That led Uh, me down a little rabbit hole. It did. A very small one. More like a a mole hole. I don't know. Mole's bigger. What's a little, what's a littler thing than a rabbit hole? A mole is smaller than a rabbit. An ant. I think so, yeah. Yeah, A little bit of an ant ant hole. There you go. (laughs) Well, ant holes can be expansive, but, but, um, yeah, I, I was like, well, I know it's Jason Wingreen is the original voice. So I was like, but the original, original voice, Holiday Special, was he was he the voice for that too? And there's no consensus on who was the voice, voice of Boba Fett in the Holiday Special. It's, it's down to two. What do you mean? There's no credits? There, no. <laughs> there's, um, no. Not, <laughs> no, one not wanted, no one wanted to be associated <laughs> with that project. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, Alan Smithy did all the voices. Yeah. It was um, based on the records and people, things people have said. It's either Don Franks or Gabriel Dell, the original voice of Boba Fett. And Gabriel Dell, <clears throat> Gabriel Dell, I think, was one of the original Bowery boys, like old timey Hollywood kind of guy. Who? I don't know what a Bowery boy is. <clears throat> what is that like? It was a, oh. uh, a comedy team from the 1940s, a bunch of like teenagers who are all like, yeah, come here, go, you know, like picture like a bunch of New York tough guys, but like oh, okay. teenagers kind of like, like the little rascals, if they were like five to 10 years older and with like a stereotypical New York. And do they all play baseball kind of and stuff? Attitude. They had, they got up to hijinks. 
Okay. They were like street kids, so they would do, okay. or, you know, urban games or whatever. Oh, okay. Did you ever see West Side Story? It's like that, West Side Story. <laughs> okay. Like the Sharks and the Jets? Kind of, yeah. But goofier, okay. not, not so much threatening the way the Sharks and the Jets are, but anyway, yes. So picture so that. So he was the voice Boba of Boba Fett. Fett. <laughs> Possibly. With a really yeah. thick New York accent, or? Yeah. Hey, what, what if, if he, he doesn't, doesn't survive? survive? <laughs> With a lot to me. <laughs> um, but now there's a holiday special we're talking, so it would have been, you know. Boba yeah, Fett has to be the most, has the most actors play him throughout the saga, right? Could be. I don't know. Because well, even in this movie, there's multiple people playing him. You know, right? Physically because of the voice. and the voice. Yeah. Right. Well, it also the he's the same, the same actor plays the Imperial who we see right. later. So anyway, Jeremy Bullock. But uh, yeah, he must have a he has a lot of people uh, playing him. I feel like the same years. can probably be said for a few of the masked, helmeted characters. Even like right. on Mandalorian, aren't there like a bunch That's of people like, that do yeah. the Mandalorian yeah. body? <clears throat> I'm also yeah. gonna interject with Jabba because Jabba you got like four or five people when he's on just one you know for on screen right you got a couple of people inside there you got one voice and then you got yeah. you know the you got the um the original guy you got people playing him in subsequent projects <clears throat> mm -hmm. there's a lot of a lot of characters change hands in this saga only Wedge has more people playing him than uh... <laughs> that's fake I don't believe that <laughs> um Anyway, the Imperial March is continuing as we start this set of minutes. And Han's line, what's going on, buddy? We were talking just before I hit record about whether buddy comes up before mm -hmm. this point. And Pete has some information on that. Yeah, this is, it, textually, this is our third buddy. Uh, because we got one, one buddy in Star Wars, which was, uh, come on, buddy, we're not out of this yet, where Han says... To Luke, like we're gonna go, we gotta go get in the turrets. Stop crying about your karate teacher. Mm. And then in this one, in the beginning, Echo Three to Echo Seven, Han, old buddy, do you read me? Uh, when they're on Hoth, Luke, Luke returns the buddy. He he he. He was like, oh, Han is my buddy. I'm gonna call him buddy. He's my old buddy. I remember buddy that time before. he called me buddy on the Millennium Falcon before we blew stuff up. Um, and then now, Han is is directing it to Lando. And then it's, it is like, it's like a contagion. It's like, a, like you're only allowed to call somebody buddy if you've been called buddy. It's like a game of tag. Oh, Started so now Lando on, can call someone buddy. Now Lando can call somebody buddy, and he will. In, in Return of the Jedi, he will, he will actually use it twice. So I don't to know. Whom? To um, whom? I believe it's to Han both times. Okay. Is, is Han always either the giver or the receiver of buddies? Um, it looks, yeah, I guess so. So maybe it's more of a... That's like people will like remember his language, right? They'll be like, "Oh, Han calls people buddy." I'm when I talk to him, I'm gonna call him buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wonder if he does. He call anyone buddy in Solo? <laughs> <laughs> You're a resident buddy expert now. You have to tell us all the uh, the buddy appearances. Uh, so here, going back to the tag theory. All right, he does when when they're when they're talking about Lando taking the Millennium Falcon. He's like, "All right, old buddy, you know I know what she means to you. He'll take good care of her." <clears throat> oh. But then. When the next time he says it, it's kind of to himself because he's worried about when they're when they're um, trying to get the shield down. He's like, "Come on, Han, old buddy, don't let me down." So he's he's saying like, "Han, remember, you're the buddy. I've tagged you. You're buddy right now. So don't let me down, buddy." I think there's like an art to saying "buddy" casually enough that it doesn't stick out too much. Yeah, yeah. Like it's. It's like wrapped up and it's wrapped into the sentence, what you just said. This one sticks out because it's like, what's going on, buddy? And it's like, obviously oh, totally. sarcastic. <clears throat> the music drops yeah. away and everything is, is perfect. It's like, it's punctuated. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then Boba, what if he doesn't survive? He's worth a lot to me. Um, Vader, the Empire will compensate you if he dies. <laughs> Put him in. Uh, you were talking on your podcast about, I don't know, it's kind of not nice, but. I don't know. Vader's being kind of above the board here. Like, instead of saying, why do you care about. Yeah, you're lucky you know, you're this. not in throwing in carbon freeze. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, quick, quick aside, I've been handed an update. Oh. Um, 
in The Force Awakens, Poe Dameron, who's basically the new Han Solo, calls BB-8 buddy. So Of course. <clears throat> of course he does. Yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, going back to this, it, it, is not, it is not kind and it is not... Um, it's 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 very. Why well, I, I let but viewing this through the lens of, well, Anakin's a spoiled brat, kid. You know now I've dealt with more kids who who do pull stuff like this than I did when we recorded that episode. So now I see it more of just like a, he's like he's like a you know, a whiny kid changing the rules. It's like no no I didn't say that I said maybe or something like that you know like he's he's totally just. Oh, you mean the carbon freeze wasn't part of the deal, so he is just... Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, looking at Darth as Anakin yeah. here, and having spent... Since the, since in the last eight years or whatever, since we recorded that episode, I've spent more time with children who are um, often wanting to get their way. So <laughs> I, I see it now. It's like, oh, okay. He's just like... I, he totally should have said it in a whiny kid voice. It's like, well, you said they could be left here. No, I said I would. I wouldn't take. I wouldn't put them in prison. But I didn't say I wouldn't take them. Like, no. So you're, talking no. About the, you're talking about the Lando part, the part where Lando's like, that wasn't part of the deal. That part. No, uh, I'm talking about Anakin being whiny. Well, you mean Anakin is whiny and changing the rules. You? But yes, you're talking Lando. about when Lando is like, hey, that's not part of the deal. Then he's being because right. this part, both of oh, saying, no, hey, no, what no, happens? We, if we he haven't gotten dies. there yet. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I jumped ahead, and I'm sorry. That's all right. You're eager. That's all right. You're eager. Your enthusiasm. It's we have, yeah. It's just a little, yeah. It's a little teaser for the, I know. the rest of your thought. See, um, when we're not doing it minute by minute, I get confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's continue listening. I think this shows oh. that the Empire was was reasonable, because he's saying they'll compensate you if he doesn't survive. It's a totally reasonable, you know, it's like our guarantee. The Imperial guarantee is uh, right. your shipment does Although, not survive, we will pay you. Well, to so let, Pete's point, this kind of does sound like daddy will can't compensate you if, it, if he dies. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, compensate is, there's a lot of wiggle room in that, so... Mm. I, I see yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll compensate you. All right. With free Don't passage worry. back home. <laughs> right. <laughs> You'll get ten percent uh, off your next uh, bounty. Yeah. Right. <laughs> your, that's your your <laughs> compensation as a tax credit, though. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um. Listen to me, Chewie. Chewie, this won't help me. Hey, save your strength. There'll be another time. The princess, you have to take care this, of her. This part feels like, uh, oh, well, it serves the purpose of Han. It turns it turns Han into a hero a little bit more, mm-hmm. I feel. Mm-hmm. He's and being also chivalrous. Th- yeah, chivalrous. And... Chewy and 3PO, I think, add to the scene in so many, so many ways. Both of them. They're they're kind of being his like almost like his angel and his devil, or like the like the his inside <laughs> out, like the 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 emotional character or Herman's head. They're they're like the, the like characters. C three PO is like the super ego, and and Chewbacca is like the id. Where he just Chewbacca right. just wants to go ah and wreck everything in three PO. Like no no no, like calm yeah. down. This so. is fine. We can make this work. <clears throat> yeah, I think it's funny that three PO is to Han. Usually giving him bad news, usually sort of saying like oh the odds of survival you know not so great. But here three PO, his information giving serves the opposite purpose. He's sort of like. Um, well, not here. He's saying, I'm not ready to die here. I guess I, I'm jumping the gun now, too. But hmm. 3PO is, is, in comparison to Chewbacca, the more level-headed, good news person in this set of minutes. Oh, the, well, yeah. I mean, this set of minutes, yeah. Yeah. Partially, yeah, yeah. I mean, part of it could easily be he's excited to get rid of the guy who's been mean to him <laughs> for the last two movie and a half. He's just like, oh, they they kiss my carbonite boy. Hey, well, that that's gonna be great for him. I bet you know. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> I sure hope he survives. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, speaking of survival, here's a weird. Uh, this is um, in the in the moment where Chewie starts freaking out. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things we see, and I, we probably commented on this in our ten years ago, but uh, Boba Fett pulls up his gun like he's gonna shoot Chewbacca. 
And then Darth Vader puts his hand down and lowers Boba Fett's gun. Like he's, like right. he's telling Boba Fett not to shoot. <clears throat> oh. Poor Qua. Uh, well, I think we, and again, maybe we talked about this eight years ago. I know there was a theory that popped up between 1999 and 2004 or whatever. Uh, 2014, rather. Um, when we talked about it. the um, Some people have said, well, well he didn't, when he was going to shoot, Chewbacca was turned around and he was going to hit C-3PO. And because Darth Vader built C-3PO, he stopped him. <laughs> He's like, no, no, don't hurt my droid. I made that to help mom. Like, you know, but yeah, I, I don't I don't buy that necessarily. I think it's more just kind of like, hey, well, let's let's not just go shooting. <laughs> yeah, well, Darth Vader's the though. reasonable one in the room. You know, things are, things <laughs> are screwy. When <laughs> He's like, well, hang on. I want to see what happens. <laughs> let's let this play out. Yeah. Or maybe he knows that the Wookiee could be worth more alive. Should they ever, should he ever, maybe the Wookiee is the compensation. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey, don't shoot <laughs> that. That's your cool. compensation, buddy. <laughs> well, here's buddy. a question. Does Darth Vader know that Chewbacca was friends with Yoda? <laughs> he even hates saying that phrase, but I mean, yeah. we have to wonder, is he that. like, oh, he's, he might be able to tell me where Yoda is hiding, mm. you know, or whatever. I don't think so. No? I just mainly because I choose not to. <laughs> did, it's not true. Did Chewbacca it's impossible. and do Chewbacca and Anakin ever meet in the prequels? In not that, not that no. we see. I'm assuming it happened yeah. in the Clone Wars at some point, but uh, oh, that's right, I forgot about the Clone Wars. Mm. Yeah, but um, hmm. anyway, you forgot about so. the Clone Wars. <laughs> 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 yes. I didn't fight in them. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Well, well yeah, in, go. In that same, I, I'm excited now to, this. Is, uh, I've got a, a note about the music. See, I, I love doing this because then it makes okay. me come back and listen to the music, and which yes. I often forget about. <clears throat> Actually, there's two things in a row, but. Um, okay. Oh, no, there's, well, it, it, there's a couple of things. We'll get to it. <clears throat> okay. Um, one is the, um, oh, I got, did we already pass it? When, when, when we get at the 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 dialogue with with Boba Fett and Darth Vader, we were talking about that, and I jumped ahead to a different note. When they're talking, when they're having that conversation, <clears throat> um, I totally I, I don't think I've ever seen before in the foreground Han and Leia are sharing a look, and we get the Han and Leia music, and they're just to totally having a moment. But I'm just, I'm like totally just you know like sci-fi nerd focused on like Darth Vader and Boba Fett are talking. Like shut up, lovebirds. Um, <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever noticed that they're in the foreground in that shot until yeah. just now focusing on it for this. I'm like, oh, hey, why is the Han and Leia music playing? Oh, look, they're on screen, you know. Are you talking about this super brief part, right? Yeah. To me. The Empire well, will compensate you if you don't. Right here. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and they're, they're, in, they're kind of framing, you know, or maybe it's also just, you know, spent most of my life watching, I, I don't know. I think I didn't watch this in Pen and Scan that much. Pan and scan? My, the the pre letterbox, you know, where they would just the TV version essentially, where they they cut the frame down into a, a TV size ratio. How do you spell like a four pan by and three scan? box? Is it just like pan? Pan, pan, pan scan, scan, yeah. Ampersand scan, pan so ampersand they would, scan. You know, Amp a letterbox okay. frame is a lot wider. A standard, you know, the ratio that uh, all of our TVs and stuff are like that are a lot closer to the ratio that it was filmed in. But TVs used to be like a like a four by three mm. box, and they would. Mm -hmm have to just decide what, because instead of making it letterbox, they would just decide what was going to be on a screen. Mm -hmm. um, and and so not the, the original off, yeah. filmmakers. Yeah, so, yeah. The, the, you know, it would be some beleaguered editor doing his best to just be like, all right, who's talking? I'll move it to that. And so in, mm -hmm. in for years, nobody saw them, I guess, on the edges of the screen. Oh. Because <sighs> if, if the people talking are in the middle, you're not seeing the edges, but... My tape that I had, I think, was basically like stretched and had had everybody on screen. So basically, from eighty seven to ninety seven, for about ten years, I think people saw this without. <clears throat> That's fascinating. I, don't know. I also, I also, for the first time, noticed that they were in the shot there, and uh, maybe it's a special edition change. We were always watching the uh, uh, <laughs> the old uh, version. Yeah, it could but, be. Uh, it's like but I also like that. The rocks. I also like that that you see them as Boba Fett is saying, "Oh, he's worth a lot to me." 
Mm-hmm. So it's like as Leia is looking at Han, he's saying, worth, oh, a, lot he's worth a lot to me. Mm. Boba Fett is saying the same thing. So it's like the dialogue. He's is, saying love triangle. Boba Fett's also in love with Han Solo. Hmm. I would be maybe we'll be in the next Boba Fett series. Hmm. We'll see. All right. Uh-huh. Yeah, Leia would be around then. So there you go. The book of love of Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Hmm. Guess we'll never know. Yeah. Um, but then also. <clears throat> music um when when he's saying the princess you'll have to take care of her he's he's calming chewy down we get the imperial marches behind that but it kind of like loops almost like they didn't have enough so it's like like slowed down (laughs) like it it you think you know where it's going and then it kind of goes back for a second and well we needed a couple more seconds of imperial march so it's almost like it was you know recut Mm. To add more over the dialogue. That's a good observation. I, record, record skipped. Almost like a record skip, yeah, but a, but a very careful and, uh, um, you know, somebody somebody's job to make that. I don't know if that was, you know, composed that way or if that's an editing thing where the music, you know, was, editor was like, all right, I'll, I'll, I can add another, stretch it out. Is it people are, there's a, there's a, some kind of ape shouting on a screen so I can kind of blend it behind that. Assuming that the editor doesn't, have, the music editor has no idea what what the Star Wars movies are all about. <laughs> yeah, just put Never it seen a second of them before. Yeah. Just. Well, let's listen to that again. Listen to me, Chewie. Chewie, this won't help me. Hey, save your strength. There'll be another time. The princess. You have to take care of her. <laughs> Totally. You hear me? Huh? Yeah. 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 Oh, I actually don't know what to make of that. It's... It sounds like it could go either way. It could be intentional. Like I could see how that could be a compositional choice. Mm-hmm. I could also see how it could be a compositional choice based on the time needing to fill. And I can also see how it could be an editing choice. Though I feel like it's, it, it sounds a little bit smooth for it to be an editing choice, but I don't know. You never know. Yeah. I, <clears throat> in these instances, since it's John Williams, I'm always in, in, inclined to say, yeah, yeah, that was intentional. You know, there's <laughs> artists certain, get a certain amount of leeway. <laughs> If well, this were a, a different style movie with a different composer, I might be like, hmm. There are a few cuts in this movie that are really sharp, where it's obvious that it's it's obvious that it's a an editing thing. Yeah. Where the music kind of gets cut off slightly. But this one's buried right. well, if if it's that. I, speaking of buried, I also note in that same sequence, comparing original, well, at least the original version that I was uh, watching, which is the I guess the rip of the DVDs that came out when the special editions, that box set came out. So it's the the kind of the highest level canonical <clears throat> um, original edition version. Mm-hmm. Listening to that versus listening to the special edition, there, there's when Chewie knocks the stormtrooper off the platform, there's in the special edition, there's a Wilhelm scream that's very muted. It's just kind of, you know, barely audible, but it's much more prominent in the mix in the original edition. And I don't know. Oh. Um, you know, again, all this, the mixes, there's more more different audio mixes than there are visual mixes, which are, which are you know, a whole different, going back to rabbit holes, this is, this is like a... Oh, it is a is massive like a, rabbit hole. Yeah. I have attempted to go down it and it's... It's so much more than I even expected. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think last time we were talking about this, I was talking about the mono mix of Star Wars, which I, I went back and watched the other day, which was... Uh, I don't think there is that much... There's no, like, one kind of, like, drastically different mix for Empire, but there's a bunch of little iterations that are different from, you know, like, oh, yeah, well, this, you know, this was the 70 millimeter mix, and this was the... You know, the original home video release mix, and then this is the... Oh, not even more than that. There are yeah. different cues are mix, like, because there's the score mixing, the, and then there's the f- overall film mixing, you know, for the soundtrack and the film. So then there are 
mixes of the music that were made for the film and there are mixes of the music made for the soundtrack, but there are mixes made by different people and every time there's been like an attempt to put out a new album, there it's like it'll be some mixes from one person, some mixes from another. It's like it, it's all mm. the tracks are like all over the place. And of course in various states of degradation and it's a whole even throughout this film, um, I think there's some discrepancies of like who did what what mix like some mixes are are more heavily compressed than others um yeah there's a whole it's 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 yeah so is this type of um like spotty record keeping do you think that this is a part of just being because it was olden times and like nowadays there would be like in, in 30 years from now, when historians are talking about the rise of Skywalker, are they going to be able to tr- like, uh, I assume there are better records kept now about when things were done and keeping track of that stuff. Is Am I, am I, do you guys think I'm wrong about this? <laughs> no, I think you're right about that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, a I, big reason, and actually I'm going to have someone on later this season who wrote this amazing <laughs> document called recording the Star Wars saga, Chris Malone. And he details like the microphones that were used, how this, how the sessions went, what, what days they recorded, what they tracked, all the different. And he has like waveforms of like the different mixes. He's a mastering and res- audio restoration um, like engineer slash expert, and he knew he knew the person who did, was the original score recordist. So mm. he will. Um, these are all questions that I have for him, but in the little <laughs> that I have talked to him and read so far, um, it seems like the technology was a big limitation for one just the and and that no one really also knew how big star wars would be so it was kind of just like i don't know soundtrack making things specifically for a soundtrack release also wasn't as big of a thing uh and yeah also it takes a lot of money to preserve these things and the less the more obsolete cds and stuff become or like physical media it's harder to sort of fund these like mastering projects and the longer that people wait the more the worse the situation is to kind of rescue these things and also there's a discrepancy between how back in the 70s and 80s things something like film music was preserved kept track of versus something like pop music which was preserved kept track of much much better like Beatles and stuff there's better much better record of that there's more money in in, in pop music, and well, sure. <clears throat> um, the idea that it was get you know the Star Wars soundtrack as much as popular as it was probably wasn't gonna. They didn't have like oh yeah and well people will be listening to this on the radio for years like you know they were right it was for like, the oh, film and the film was done get it done so, for like, the movie it's, it's on the movie what else do you want you know yeah yeah, <clears throat> yeah. so it, interesting to to you know besides I think we all think about you know the the kind of. Hollywood, uh, you know, uh, kind of blockbuster release environment and also merchandising as far as things that Star Wars changed, but also like all these other little things that Star Wars changed or helped change, you know, like even going to the, you know, talking about how, how why weren't there records of who was the voice of Boba Fett in the holiday special? Because like nobody cared at that point. Whereas now you'd yeah. be like, oh yeah, and that person would be on the convention circuit, you know, and you'd be able to look up there that they yeah. were in it. You'd have fans um, angry that so and so was not the voice of Boba Fett now. It's right, this yeah. other person now and right. petitions. I want my Bowery boys. <laughs> uh, wise guy, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Let's listen to the soundtrack um, version without the dial- dialogue and stuff so we can hear the Imperial March. It's a little before this, actually. Okay, let me skip a little forward. I just want to hear if it loops. Hmm. Uh, Ominous. Mm Mm-hmm. Chewie's freaking out at that point. Oh, I love that open G string. Yep. Hmm. It does loop there, too. It is intentional. It's not editing, see? Yeah. Good old John Williams. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it is hard to listen to that and not just kind of randomly start shouting like a Wookiee. Yeah. 
Yeah. Because that's, I and know, screaming. you know, I, I, I've talked about driving around and, you know, playing it and just shouting out random bits of dialogue, but also, like, sound effects and stuff when I can, when I can approximate them so it's hard to hear kind of that, you know, anything from the scene without just, like, doing panicked wookie shouts. <laughs> wookie you panic. You said a similar thing on your podcast eight years ago. Oh, good. Yeah. I'm consistent. You're consistent. That. <laughs> yeah. Um... That would have been funny if it was the opposite. You were like, oh, I hate listening to the soundtrack because I just keep hearing the voices and talking and Wookiee right. yelling in my head. <laughs> or like, what, what kind of idiot drives around and shouting about <laughs> Wookiees? And now I'm like, oh, I love driving around and shouting about Wookiees. Um, <clears throat> my na- this might be a little bit... I think we're moving forward to the next part. That's what my next... Yeah, we are. Has. So go ahead. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I, I wrote hard, hard not to do random Chewbacca yells, but then I wrote Glockenspiel in the March. Mm. Glockenspiel in the March. <clears throat> in the part that we just the March, You know what they say. I don't know. In the, when the Imperial March kicks back in, I think it's during the actual freeze. Mm, yeah. Well, we will definitely get there and there is okay. Glockenspiel for sure. Yeah. All right. It'll be exciting to talk about that part. Um, speaking of exciting, mm. we are now entering a part where I'm going to play footage from this scene without the music from mm. this is from to the spotting session and i'm going to put a link look i'm going to put it very small on screen you can see it's labeled it's from the bbc documentary called star wars music by john williams <clears throat> the documentary aired on tv and um i'm putting Pete and Alex back on the screen. Here we go. It aired on TV and someone has put it on YouTube. I will put a link to where you can find that depending on when you listen to this. It may or may not be there, but you know, it exists. So if you know where to find this BBC documentary, then you can, you can see this for yourself. Nice. Um, yeah. So that's where I, I got this from. I'm going to play it. Here it is on its own. They're kissing. I love you. I know. Yeah, so that's that. <laughs> ah, and then cut to John Williams being like, what, what do we do? do? What do we do? That? <clears throat> yeah. And then there's, and then I also have <laughs> another bit Imperial of footage. March? What was that? Mm. It's like, he's like, should I play the Imperial March two times? <laughs> Should I loop it? Just at the, um, and then I have footage from um, the actual. Okay, this is this is footage from the documentary. This is going to be kind of like mm. uh, foot. It's going to be footage within footage. Um, mm-hmm. It's where we can see John Williams's reaction to watching this, mm. and what his initial sort of yeah, what his initial reaction is. So this is again from the BBC documentary. <gasps> And here we go. What's going on, buddy? You're being put into carbon freeze. You're a traitor. You're going to be judged to survive. You've got a lot to So John Williams will compensate you for your is sitting on a couch with a bunch of other people. Seeing it for the first time. Stop, Tui! Stop! 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 Listen to me! Stop! Oh, please! Oh, hey! Hey! Listen to me! Tui! This is marvelous. This is very touching here, I think. Nomination. I need you to protect her. Oh, all that. I love that. Mm-hmm. Gary Kurtz. Uh, is that? That's where it was. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of the thing for. Of what? It's the thing for. Yeah. Now they're kissing. The kiss. Yeah. Very good. Now the great moment. I love you. I know. <laughs> what are you going to say? And now he is miming. He's miming a violin. Yeah. Oh, and I, that's I what he, he does. Dabbing. <laughs> like, did John oh Williams just dab? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, like, I love you. I know. <clears throat> <laughs> so it's, he knew after that, you got to get the strings in there. Totally. And that is, that is indeed what he did. Hmm. It's, what do you think? What's, what's your reaction to that? I, it's very funny seeing you without the music. It reminds me either of um, <clears throat> when you see those people take Big Bang Theory and strip out the laugh track, right? Or yeah. uh, oh. or the, um, the oral knots did a thing where yeah, they show the oral knots. They show the medal ceremony, but without <laughs> yes. any of the 
music and Chewie just going like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's very odd. It, it's also just weird to th- imagine that there's a time where there wasn't music in it, and that John Williams they had John Williams is the one who had to put the music in it. You know, it's it's just weird to because uh, it could have been any yeah. kind of music in there. But it'd be fun to re- just redub that with different styles of music. Yeah, yeah, like, fun. Because you know, since it was so seventy, fun. you know, well, eighty, seventy nine, you're filming this. Totally put in the disco soundtrack. Oh God, totally. <laughs> Yeah, I find it really it the way that the film is with the music that we are familiar with. It feels so inevitable that seeing it without it and seeing mm-hmm. I don't know, John Williams is basic I don't know the vision that one must have to do to do what he did based on that. He's looking at that mm-hmm. and going like Mus- musical equivalent of vision whatever. That yeah, the what the musical the, vision. The musical vision. You have the, to have the imagination. But like the, the audio Audibility, the uh, hearing. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sounds strange, but yes. And just the way that he could tell, like what the, I guess what the what the meat of the scene was, what the uh, emotion to highlight was, right. And it kind of draws attention to how much the composer is highlighting their own experience of how they're viewing the film. Of course, they have notes from the director and everything too, but yeah, it's just so, I'm, just, I'm, I'm impressed by this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So let's listen Does to it. Give me if I've asked this question. Okay. Can I just ask a quick question? Yeah. Um, I'm assuming, do, are you aware of any instances where John Williams presented music and... Lucas or any other other people were like, eh, you know what? Let's go in a different direction than that. Totally. M- many times in this film. Really? Yeah. Okay. And e- cool. even in, I was unaware of that, so. And even in A New Hope, the original Binary Sunset track was not what it was. It was disco. Yeah, if you have any, if you have one of the versions of the soundtrack that has um, binary sunset alternate. You can hear what originally John Williams wrote for Luke to be staring out at the French horn. It's not mm. that. It's something much darker. Mm. And George Lucas mm. asked him to try again, make something more hero it mm. up a bit. Yeah. And in I'll the Empire Strikes Back, back there are many. Um, there are a few big bits of music that John Williams wrote that Kirshner just didn't want. Um, because he was going for a more sparse atmosphere. One of them is like, when we meet Yoda, uh, it used to be, I mean, by used to be, I just mean originally John Williams wrote <laughs> much more Yoda, bouncy music for that, but it's it's silent. And then also on Hoth, more toward the beginning of the music, of the movie, there's like a lot of Hoth music written where actually there's just no music now. Um, mm. and, you can act, and you can hear these tracks on the soundtrack um, but I hmm. bet a lot of people um, listen to the soundtrack and just think that they remember it from the film when it's not in the film. Right. Yeah. Williams-esque. Um, <laughs> I start shouting bits of dialogue that are from a different part of the movie entirely. Yeah. But there have been people, of <laughs> course, on YouTube who have taken the tracks and resynced it to like mm. what it would have been. Right. Yeah. So John are Williams definitely takes Are you aware of any notes. times... Are you any, aware of any time was where John Williams, uh, like in these cases where a musical score was rejected, that he was like, "Oh, you know what? I'll use that in Hook or or other." Did it, did oh, any I, of these rejected oh. pieces surface in later films that he was like, you know? I don't know. I don't like really. A, I'm inclined to say probably not, but he does have hmm. certain turns of phrase and certain. He certainly has like sig- signature signatures. He certainly has yeah. like stylistic things that he motifs. He, yeah, sure. And just way, you know, like how people, directors might be fond of certain cuts, certain wipe cuts or, or whatever. Uh, John Williams certainly has his things. They hold you from movie to movie. Mm-hmm. Sure. Okay. Let's listen, in, let's listen to this scene with the music.
I love you. I know. Strings. Totally. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. But yeah, that's that came from what's came from this. Here it is on its own. I love you. I know. Oh, I mean, that's just wild. Yeah. Classic. <clears throat> also, also, I do like the... the Love hearing the differences between the onset sound and then the obviously, like, well, we needed that, you know, the... The, the ADR. Yeah, ADR. And also just the different, you know, sound from different shots, different, you know, where it's like, oh, well, the hiss is totally different in the wide shot from the, you know, close-up shots where it's just like, well... We need all this steam, so you just gotta say it, and we'll 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 loop it later. Cause it's like, I love you, you know, like yeah. like right next to a giant, you know, like <clears throat> steam fog machine going overtime. Yeah, I find it really helpful to understand how the film was put together to watch that watch it like that. It's much more patchwork. Yeah, totally. Well, that's you know. Again, these films are more so with the first one, but, you know, definitely with the original trilogy, a lot of it comes from editing, so. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so I want to do a, a bit of a breakdown of the what is happening in the music mm -hmm. in this part. So let's switch to the soundtrack-only version. So this part will start at 135. Okay, so I'm starting at 135 into... Carbon Freeze slash Darth Vader's Trap slash Departure of Boba Fett. Okay, so it's going to start with Han and Leia's theme. So it's we're in B major, by the way. I'm a fan of B. Okay, now before we escalate, because this theme will keep escalating, in the background we have the strings doing this really ferocious like so the melody has a pretty the notes in the melody are pretty long they're not short they're not fast you know it's lyrical it's long but then underneath we hear have this just this undercurrent of like mm. basically you know exactly like not exactly like that but um, if you listen really carefully, do you hear all that fast hmm. moving oh, yeah. underneath? Yeah. Yeah, it lends like um, a visceral intensity to it without drawing, without the melody having to alter itself. Um, the accompaniment to the melody is often is what makes a lot of this part of the score really interesting to me. Okay. So. I was also hearing the Darth Vader breathing, and I'm like, are they, is it to the rhythm? No, it's... Wait, Darth, it's, you, were, you were hearing Darth Vader... Oh, were you hearing Darth Vader breathing in your head? Because that was just um, the soundtrack. No, I know, when we were, when we were watching oh. the clip before, I was like, I was listening for Darth Vader breathing um, and how it matches up to the tempo, and it's not like... I feel like it... it Almost, when it almost matches, they kind of like hold off for a second and kind of come back. Like they they, they don't want it to be on tempo because then it's too like matchy matchy and musical. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we also have the harp and and Celeste doing little. Brrr -dum. Brrr -dum. 
Now we have the harp going. Okay. Now, obviously, this is the I, I love you, I know part. We can hear the escalation in the music without anything happening. We go, we have a sudden leap from, um, let's see. How am I going to play this? Well, we have a sudden leap. So this is what we're doing before. Okay. <laughs> Too many things on my screen. Let's see. How do I do this? Um, That's right. So first it's. And then we're gonna jump to. I mean, it's quite obvious yeah. when you hear it. And plus it's aided by a crescendo. So you hear literally like a swell in volume. Yeah, you're like being pushed up to a new level. <clears throat> And not only that, but the strings, which this is the part where John Williams, if you're watching this on YouTube, you could see the footage of John Williams miming a violin, not dabbing, but <laughs> miming, holding up a violin at that part. And it's when the violin, the, not just the violins, the strings, they switch from doing this stuff to the melody. So let's hear that transition. Now the violins have the melody, so that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> yes. Um, yeah. I love this part. This part is um, Frank in Frank Lehman's. This would be a good time for people who have Frank Lehman's catalog, by the way, to get out. <laughs> the complete catalog to the musical themes of Star Wars. Because if you look at the incidental motifs, um, a, bunch of, a bunch of them are basically covered in this, in this section. A bunch of interesting ones that don't get talked about very much because they don't really show up that much. One of them is this part that we're hearing, the... Um, it does have a name, and the name of it is, you two will like this, Neapolitan Emergency. Hmm. And hmm. I've had those. Uh, yeah. Uh, Neapolitan. I can only two thirds of it, though. Um, I'll put it on screen if people want to see what that looks like. Um, the way he describes it is a common melodic slash harmonic gesture in Empire Strikes Back. See also Asteroid Field losing a hand based on a flat two to five. So a flat two is a Neapolitan. Okay. And um, it, 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 you know, it's okay if you don't know what that means, but flat two to five and oscillation. And tri the oscillation means is like the fact that it's going back and forth. Um, yeah, and it emerges from, emerges from Han and Leia's theme featured heavily in, in this cue. Um, this is, well, before I share my own thoughts about this, what, when the music switches to this section, what do you make of it? Do you want to hear it again or do you know it? Well, it does sound like it's like <clears throat> going into, maybe not danger, but like suspense is going from you know this swelling love into kind of like uh, what's gonna have all oh, suspense being you know good suspended animation almost it's like or or we don't know what's gonna happen um it goes from from kind of like again those dabbing strings into ill at ease yeah a little bit what about you attention yeah i think it's uh it's a transition from them you know their proclamation of love and knowledge and then it's more like okay now what's going to happen and that sort of you know we don't really quite know where the music's going to end up and then it just cut you know cuts off so i think that's a cool um, yeah i mean this is when han builds is up basically and builds up and then it's like you just go off that <laughs> cliff of that silence of when you see the right. pincers you know pulling up the thing it really builds up the uh, the tension 
Yeah. This is him like walking the plank or he's mm. approaching the scaffold at this yeah. point. And it sounds much more intense to me. I mean, the way that Han and Leia's theme plays before this, it sounds intense, but like also intense in in the in love sort of intense. Um, it does remind me of Attack of the Clones before the mm. before the arena battle when Anakin and Padme declare they have their first kiss as they're about to. Um, mm. The music swells there as well. But here, when we get to this Neapolitan emergency section, the rhythm is one of the things that strikes me the most about it. Um, let's hear. Let's get it up. So the top line is is pretty strict. Now, we do have some triplets there at the end, but basically that sort of melody, the is echoed in almost all of the instruments, but in different, I guess echoed is the wrong word, reinforced, but in different rhythms. So it kind of, um, I don't know, the feeling of it is like, I don't, I don't know how to describe the feeling of it, but let me tell you what the, um, and I'll put something on the screen. I'll tell you what the um, other instruments are playing. I think the most obvious other one is the horns going. <laughs> like they're doing the 16th notes. <laughs> and it's very punctuated. So this very long, you know. And that on totally sounded like Batman. <laughs> That's funny. Um, on top of that, here I have this little mm. little thing that I that I wrote out. Um, so this top line is. Let me do, actually let me duplicate this page so I can write on it without ruining anything. Okay. So this top line is what I just played. Mm. And this is the violin, the first violin, second violin, viola, cello. Of course, the first violins are um, playing up here. And the second violins. And then, you know. So it's reinforced in, in multiple octaves, but this is just a reduction. And then the, the bass instruments, bass, bassoon, bass clarinet, they are doing, you know, a bass line. <laughs> just reinforcing an E, which clashes against the, the F. So it's... Mm. Hmm. And then we have the horns, which are doing the da-da-da-da, and it's not just in... On one note, they're basically, oh, I wrote this really tiny. Um, <laughs> they're going. Yep. Uh, something like that. But the point is it's fast. And it's, for every set of, for every four of those, um, every four 16th notes adds up to one quarter note. Um, so in the time that, the bass notes play one note. The horns are playing four notes. So, if that makes sense. So, we're hearing like different, m many different scales. And I don't mean like do, re, mi scales. I mean 
scales as in size, as in like the size of things. We're hearing this um, melody reinforced in many scales. We have the, the sort of slower, we have the really fast, we have the medium, and then the fastest is the woodwinds. They're doing, like you can see how small I had to write it to match. This is all taking place in the same, in the same amount of time, what you see on screen. Um, that's in general how musical scores work. Everything vertically is happening at the same time. So you can see how cramped the woodwind section is. And they are going basically, oh, I can't even play it fast. They're going sextuplets. I can't play it, I can't play it this fast on the piano. But that, you know, in the time that the violins are going, they're going, like you can't, even really right. make it out because it's so it's happening so fast and I, oh I just think it really propels this forward but without feeling like it's going anywhere it just feels oh it's just the most tense like holding pattern um yeah you think you think they turn the page and the woodwind is like oh come on and the violins like <laughs> ah. maybe <clears throat> although I think the woodwinds to play playing something like that would be easier on a woodwind instrument than on right. piano, sure. especially if you haven't like practiced your piano skills in a while. But um, yeah, woodwind, this is, I think, something that could be classified as filigree. Could it be classified as filigree? Just like woodwind. Um, yeah, it's this, it's, you know, it's a fast, frilly stuff, but it really mm. st is still reinforcing the same notes. It's this F E. Yeah, and then we have this sort of juxtaposition between things that are in a, a duple time, like a div divisible by four, rhythms that are divisible by two, and rhythms that are divisible by three. And so having like two duple things against triple things kind of gives a little bit of a, of a rubbing rhythmic feeling as well. Do, does that mm. make any sense? If not, I'll keep explaining. No, totally. <clears throat> it does make sense? I, yes, I mean, I, not all the details are going to sink in because there's a lot of stuff, but I, um, yes. Yes. What you're saying as the far as the strokes. different, the contrast creating the kind of danger. Yeah. Or the ill, the Ill at ease-ness. Yeah. And <clears throat> I just love it. Here's a little yeah. rhythmic primer for anyone who wants it. <laughs> um, basically, we have, um, if you look on this left section, these are all... You know, at the top, this is a whole note, which takes four beats. These two things are half notes. And so to make up a whole note, you need two of them. These things are quarter notes. So to make up a whole note, you need four of them. These things are called eighth notes. So to make up a whole note, you need eight of them. Sixteenth notes, thirty-second notes, et cetera. You just keep subdividing, um, you know, like like cells, <laughs> I guess. Um but the thing that this... The Chlorians. Yeah, like the Nichlorians. Mm. But the thing that this tree doesn't represent that I had to do separately is triplets, which is three triplets make up, you know, each thing, each note can also be split up into three. And so if you, you know, it becomes much more complicated when you start splitting things up in by threes or by fives or other, other, um, other values. So here we have a lot of like... You know, six against four, three against two, um, happening right. all together. <clears throat> okay, oh, I love that part. Neapolitan <laughs> emergency. Good stuff. Mm. Well, and then, it. yeah, <laughs> and then the part. I have a hard time not saying that phrase a lot. Neapolitan emergency. <laughs> it's a good band. I highly here. recommend using it in daily life. Right. Mm -hmm. It has good results. Whenever I want to go to the ice cream parlor because I'm having a Neapolitan, <laughs> Neapolitan emergency. emergency. <gasps> that would be a really fun ice cream flavor. Yeah. What's the emergency part that you put it like? You put emergency. I mean, the, the flavors like are there, but the then you get vitamin. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, the, ah. the nutritional <laughs> immunity supplement. Yeah. That, that could work, actually. Yeah, yeah actually. <clears throat> it would make a good topping. I don't know, like a, mm. a nice little sprinkle. Yeah, depending on the flavors. Yeah. You got traditional Neapolitan? I don't know. Or you could it's... replace strawberry with orange. And actually, yeah. I might like that better. Mm. Mm, you don't like that. No. He doesn't like know. chocolate. Oh, that's right. That's right. 
You right. can replace that's the, chocolate. That's with the flavor it. he'd want to sub out. Yeah. 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 Strawberry is doing a lot of the work in that mix for me. So. Oh. Oh, not if there are chunks in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chunks are no good. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> so the carbon freeze. Um, well, okay. Now I'm hearing a difference in the soundtrack versus in the film version. Doesn't the sound doesn't the music cut out entirely after the block starts coming up? Are we up to that part yet? Yeah, we are. Well, it might. I thought the music totally think, just cuts out and it's just silent and you just hear the grinding of the grinding of I my ears when it I think it's masked behind the, the sounds, but I think there is a little bit of that percussion still just kind of lingering. But it mixes so well with the mechanical sounds because it's yeah, what it is. I can't tell if it actually cuts out or if it's just um, a very soft sustain, but let's listen. Um, but there is a, an even different change that I will point out in a second. Okay. It doesn't really stop. I mean, after it... Okay, keep going. Okay, I'll keep going. Going on. See, it's masked behind the sound effect. Oh, I see what you're saying. I guess we're not That's quite the at part that part. I'm thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. And here, wait. Oh, this is my favorite thing. That. That. I love that so much. Which part? Like, the the, the high pitched thing? Or the, sound? Or like, like the little, and it, I can't even do it right. It sounds like a, I might have said this eight years ago, but it sounded like, like one of those little plastic tubes that you twirl around. And you I can, know exactly what you mean. Oh, yeah. It, is, it does sound it, like that. And it, but like a digital version of that, or like a bird. It sounds like a, like a, um, what are those things called? I don't know why uh, I, I I'm I'm sure I must have played with one at some point. Yeah. How do I find one? I want to find one. <laughs> <laughs> what do I look up? <laughs> Alex, you know what we're talking about? The pla- like it's like a ribbed plastic tube with like a little sure. bit of a bell on one end usually, and if you twirl them around, mm-hmm. they like. Woo, but mm-hmm. then you can try to kind of change your octave or s- yeah. scale or whatever just by adjusting your speed don't, a little bit, and so it's easy to go that that little like. Don't they use a variation of those for like soccer games or football games and stuff? Those are like a like a tube you blow in those. Those are the vuvuzela. Vuvuzela. All right. Vuvuzela. Oh my gosh. Okay, um, listeners, if you know what we're talking about, please let me know. I kind of yeah, want to play with them. <laughs> totally. See how my um, cat reacts to that. But that little digital like like it, it, it's such a so clear in my head going back like that was that's just like oh and especially because I can't recreate it with my, you know, I can make the Chewbacca yeah. noises all I want, and I can I can imitate, mm-hmm. you know, uh, carbon blocks, you know, clanking and and you know grippers, but I can't make that sound well enough. There's something um, frustrating about sounds that I can hear in my head but not reproduce myself, where it feels like I just can't express it because I can't do it. So then it's very satisfying to to hear it or to hear other people able to do it, which is why I really want that toy now. I need it. Mm. Um, I also, this seems like an opportunity for something, maybe, you know, in the works, it has to be an official Lucasfilm thing, I think, but uh, but somebody definitely needs to do, like, as a recurring show, like, what is that with Ben Burt? You know, like, when you go uh, through, just, like, pulling out each sound and being like, what is that? And him, you know, the way he's talked about, the, you know, casserole for Jabba the Hutt and the, you know, banging on the wrench on the high-tension wire supports the guy lines for, for, for the blasters and the, 
wet pavement and lion roars for the TIE fighters, whatever it is. So, like, he needs to, we need to just, like, break down individual sounds and be like, what is that? And have him just talk for, like, a half hour. I do have some information for you. Um, Mm. The big cranes that come down with the carbon block um, is all the pipes and steam and equipment is a little, there's a little whistling sound that you hear when the carbon block is raised up out of the pit. And that was produced by taking a tiny little piece of flexible water pipe and touching it to a block of dry ice. And oh, when yeah. the metal touches the dry ice, it actually boils away the dry ice a little bit, and that produces an escape, uh, escaping gases, which, as they fly through the little pipe, made it into a little musical instrument. It was really just an accident, says Ben Burt. Oh, so we, wow. was, do we think that's the thing that we were just talking about, or is that the... I think so. Oh, I got to try that. Because I put yeah. dry, dry ice in the in sink, here. in the metal sink, and you get, a, you get definitely a squealing noise, but I don't... Yeah. I want to Dry ice is used... Pipe. Dry ice is a big Ben Burt trick. Definitely used for mm. lightsaber clashes. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of effects he's done by placing metal against dry ice to get squeaks and for sharp mm-hmm. musical sounds. Um, yeah, but you could also put a coin on dry ice and you get a ringing, buzzing. Uh, that make a good element for laser guns and electrical mm-hmm. can can be used for electrical sparking, um, etc. Dry ice, I played with a lot as a child. <laughs> I was really mm-hmm. into dry ice. And my dad would bring home wow. dry ice sometimes if he had some. Um, my dad's a doctor, and so vaccines, I think, would be packed in dry ice. So if he was getting like a shipment of vaccines, he would bring the dry ice home, and we'd go and, and we'd go outside and bring all, do all our fun stuff to it. It's very fun, very fun. Mm. Um, so yeah, these these sounds are very. Um, I don't know. They're they're familiar in a Star Wars way and in a in a playing a lot with dry ice way. But that little musical instrument, I wonder if it works even without putting dry ice and producing escaping gases. I wonder if just uh, spinning it around like like a whip is something about like the air flowing through it does that too. Yeah. I don't know. Hmm. That's a little too easy. I feel like you have to involve, a, there has to be a chemical tr- transaction going, <laughs> chemical uh, process going on to really get that Well, s- air, sound waves are just... Displaced air. They're just air being true. It's all compressed chemical. and yeah. 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 So <laughs> yeah. That, that's all a podcast is, is just, you know, compressed air just escaping. Compressed. <laughs> yeah. Um the after the part okay, so there is a there's a difference that I'm noticing in the soundtrack and the um and the film. And it's before the dry ice block part it's the part that we are at right now where it's the um what is it um i just want to make sure i get the rhythm right yeah you know you know the part do you, do you know the part do you know the part it's this part yeah yeah as it's like leading up to the yeah the, the freezing is going on but we haven't seen the block yet <clears throat> yeah, it's like be, because in this in this section we have like first I guess the progression is the Han and Leia theme and then the Han and Leia and then the escalation of Han and Leia theme and then the Neapolitan emergency and now this dramatic really on the edge of the scaffold or I don't is that how scaffold whatever and you can hear the timpani boom boom <laughs> boom right. boom. Um, and then it's going to go to, uh, another thing in a second where then it kind of goes into the, um, you have a quizzical look, but that's okay. Uh, so the, the, the thing I'm hearing different is that I'm hearing a beat cut out of it and Mm. I'm not, I'm not sure why, and I'm not sure why that is. It feels like a cut because listen to um, listen to it on the soundtrack. Um, let's see. Let's let's start at the right place. It's a very long track. So, all right. Long track. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and one, two, 
three and four and one. Okay. That was five bars of four, four. Mm. So now let's listen to it in the film. So instead of five bars of four, four, it was two bars of three, four and mm. three bars of four, four. So they cut mm. those first two bars, they cut a beat out of each bar. So mm. it was on the soundtrack, it's... One and da 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 and then in the film it's da 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 and then back da 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 yeah so they shaved a beat in total they shaved two beats off right that to make it more suspenseful I don't know I don't know if it I mean I it does. I think it's suspenseful both. I could see it be sus- being suspenseful both ways. Um, seems, I'd guess it's more of a sync thing because it seems like it I was know. edited that way. Right. And it is getting a little less urgent. So it's instead of like, oh, no, actually, well, I, think it, I think it makes it sound more urgent actually to, uh, to speed up. <clears throat> yeah. To speed that up. Wait, is yeah. it getting sped up or is it just cutting out the... Yeah, it's not the pace of it isn't getting sped up, but because the distance of it is shorter, right. it's, you're getting through the material faster. So you're getting to bar three, two bar two beats earlier because they right. cut so two beats out. At the beginning, that's what I'm saying. So it's like more tense and then it kind of goes into a little bit less. You're getting mm, a little more saying. time near the end. So it's like, oh, all right, well, the we're, we're, the action is, you know, like the, the carbon freezing is happening and we're, we're winding down. Things are getting slowed a tiny bit yeah a little bit um yeah i just it's interesting interesting that that happens and the instruments are all the ones that are playing at least which is like trumpets trombones tubas violin viola cello bass some other sort of things they are unified we don't have like some things playing lyrical things and other instruments playing you know accompaniment and other instruments playing a bunch of different things, which is what an orchestra usually does. Here they are in rhythmic unison. They're all, this is where they're all, it's like they're all going like, I don't know, kill him, kill him or whatever. (laughs) Um, Yeah, it's like a stadium chant almost. Yeah, it's a stadium. That's that's a better way to put it. It's a stadium chant right here. They're all together, the instruments. Except for the timpani, of course. The symphony's the clapping that goes along with the chant. <clears throat> yeah, or yeah, stomping. yeah, actually. Or stomping, yeah. No. The stomping, it really is. Um, well, this is, I think it's a slightly different, and, and forgive me if I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but I wrote the pre-March March part because I think this kind of leads into that because this is not the same, it's, it's related piece of music, I think, but it's not, I think then as the, after we get the freezing, then we get this, like the background music is largely, it's, it, I feel like, I call it the pre-March March part because it's like the things that we hear when we're leading up to the Imperial March sometimes. It's that like, dun, 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 you know, like, mm. or, or now it's hard to, because I, I just have the, the stadium chant part in my head now. But <laughs> like, bam, but, uh, dun, 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 I'm going to do a terrible job of this, but like we've heard it dun, in this dun, movie dun, before. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, well, kind of like, but we get, yeah, like before the march starts, then we yeah. get that kind of like flowing a little bit, I think, here. Mm-hmm. There's, re- I, I feel like it's related. It, it, was there a name for that, like, the pre, or is that just part of the Imperial March? The, the pre-march march. Do you mean this part? Yeah. It's the Imperial February. It's, it's the, just <laughs> slightly before the march. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's like a rolling thing too. Like I think we heard, we heard it, like when we the Star Destroyer is kind of you know in the asteroid field before we get the march, like that kind of like 
build up to the imperial, the actual, like, you know, the part of the march that we hear. Do you mean the, like, the... No. Okay. What's the rolling part? I, I was with you until the rolling part. What is rolling? Well, it, it, it sounds kind of like what we just heard, except it's like then... It's like, and it go, I, I, again, I can't, I don't have it on the tip of my brain or tongue right now because we just heard other parts, but I, I think we'll hear it in a second because it's in my notes for this. So it's like, I, <coughs> I think it's the part that's leading up to what, what an awesome moment that we're about to hit too. It, it's it's all in the kind of post-freezing part where Vader's talking to Lando and all that stuff. The part that mm. I was talking about before that I accidentally jumped ahead to. Yeah, well, I don't think this specifically has a name, but in my notes I wrote, very dramatic dotted and triplet rhythm, fortissimo mm. with timpani interspersed, evokes imperial march. That that's, so. was on the tip of my tongue. What? Of no, I'm, imperial march? Oh, 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 oh that, that, one. that whole name. <laughs> yeah. Um, We're basically just rephrasing what Peter said. Yeah. 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 You know, when yeah. I say imperial February, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so... Right after that Imperial February, um, it's like everyone in on the Imperial March. It's right. one of the more, it's one of the most blaring statements we ever have of it, where often it'll be like the horns, the trombones are leading it, or, you know, I don't know. But here it's like, it's totally stacked. It's, we hear it in low voices, we hear it in high voices, we hear it. In flutes, piccolos, oboes, clarinet, French horns, trumpets, glockenspiels, and okay. then the offbeats are bassoons, trombones, tuba, timpani, viola, cello, bass, um, and we'll listen to that. And this is what I mean, where. Okay, let's. let's Let's stop there, but um, yeah, I guess it's more of the, now that I think of it, it's more of the high-pitched instruments, especially the ones that are very, uh, the ones that their tone really cut through, like like piccolos right. is a huge one that really cuts through, and the glockenspiel really cuts through on the melody there. Um, I think because all the chaos of the sounds are all kind of a lower, it's all more mechanical, lower kind of register stuff, so we need those cutters of the high pitch yeah. things. That's um, a... Mm-hmm. Alex? I have a question just generally, an orchestra question in general. Uh, glockenspiel, uh, is that their only instrument or do they, is it the, one of those things where they play a various percussion things? Usually you know it would I mean? be various percussion. Like in the okay. percussion section, the battery or the, the kitchen sink section... <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, the, uh, percussion the is sometimes ice. called. Um, <laughs> there will be a dedicated person for timpani, mm-hmm. and there's dedicated people for piano, celeste, harp. Um, but then there are percussion, other people that kind of run around and cover all of the percussion. Right. So the cannon, snare, uh, cymbal, you know, glockenspiel yeah. when it comes up. Yeah. Okay. And all right. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. No, no more questions, Your Honor. <laughs> because sometimes, because p- t- percussion is like, it's kind of spotty sometimes, where sometimes it's not really used very much, and sometimes it's, you know, really snare, and, you know, sometimes it's really something else. You'd be really bored if your only job was to play triangle mm. the entire time. Yeah. Um, so... Round. Chewbacca, I can't see. One, two, three. Now, leading into the Imperial March. And the way that it ends with the high pitched instruments with flutes, piccolo, oboe, violins, doing this, you know, that comes up a lot in this film especially later. It's not named as a, th- as a theme or anything, but I, I think of it as like the night on Bald Mountain mm, totally. chromatic line. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. Night on Bald Mountain. So it's kind of like the storm part. Where it's gonna be. Yeah. Let's see. Mm-hmm. I, do have, I do have a clip from, in case anyone is 
Not familiar. Or Alex, Alex, you know Night on Disco Mountain. Mm-hmm. Isn't it called Night on Disco Mountain? Here we go. <clears throat> but it's those strings. Totally. Similar thing. Very those, similar thing here. What was one that? Of those, one of those pieces that, you know, strictly from Saturday morning cartoons. Oh, and Fantasia, that one. Yeah, Fantasia is yeah. where I know it from. Yeah, it's a really scary. You can see it on Saturday. Saturday. That's Saturday you could morning. see it on yeah. Saturday. In, Only yeah. on Saturdays. <laughs> Do you have a audio version that is the just the music taken? I mean, is everything except the music? But anyway, the reason I ask is because there's a lot of sound effects also in this sequence, and I, I feel like almost they can almost become like hear it as part of the music like a, you know all that kind of like, it sounds like email like there's almost like thunder in it or something yeah is that um i do not have an isolated recording okay. of just the sound effects i wish i did right. though yeah but i agree you have the one is just the music yeah yeah we can listen to that <laughs> that okay. is easier to yeah much more i'm curious as to tools. what is sound effects and what parts are music you know what i mean yeah okay anyway. Two, three. This is when Vader's face is in the fog. What was that? This is where we see Vader's face. In the fog, it looks really cool. Mm-hmm. What happened there? Clearly, it didn't cut out on the soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, the, notice the absence of orchestral ugnots that I thought that was yeah. <laughs> right. Picturing the the you know percussion person and they're playing the you know triangle and whatever, and then just going to like squeeze a little pig man. <laughs> In the right spot. <clears throat> I tried to look it up, but I could not find out what sound it is to use to, to make the ugnoths. If it's like a bird mm. or a, some kind of... Mm. I'm again, also maybe. curious what because they that? do not sound bird. like pigs to me. Yeah. I, see, I think that we're getting tripped up. Visually, we see the pig face and we're like, oh, it must be a pig thing, but I bet it's something completely you know, different. It's like a... Well, it sounds completely different. I, yeah. Yeah. I just know that they're meant to be porcine, but, you know, that doesn't mean they have to sound like that, I guess, but they right. really sound squirrely to me. Mm, could be squirrels. <laughs> they sound rodent, rodent-y to me. Hmm. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So carbon freeze occurs. Um, mm-hmm. The offbeats really do propel. They're not really audible, but they do add, um, they do add something visceral to this scene and i mean like did it did it did it did it did it you know i think people are are used to hearing the imperial march with those offbeats um okay so now we have this sound dry eyes Mm. Love that sound. No, there's that. Oh. Han and Leia, more subdued and slow. Now the breathing can be the star of the show again. Mm. Now that the carbonite stuff is over. I'm about to go into a little bit of that electronic wobble. That's that good. Checking out the the vital signs. Yeah. Um, I really like that we don't have music during the carbonite freezing. Just hearing it alone is like... Yeah. Yeah. 
It places you right in the moment um, without the music to smooth anything over or make it, um, yeah. And then when the Han and Leia theme comes in, of course, slower and... Oh, they've encased him in carbonite. He should be quite... Good old 3PO. If he survived mm -hmm. the freezing process, that is. Well, Calrissian, did he survive? Yes, he's alive. And in perfect hibernation. He's all yours, Perfect Bounty Hunter. Reset the chamber for Skywalker. I think it's so funny that, that this was even... I, I forget that this was a plot point, that they wanted to... In right. case Luke and Carbonite, it's so, it's, it seems so silly if it had gone that way. Well, especially considering yeah. that the next time they meet, Luke just surrenders himself without even any fight at all. So this right. whole thing was it's kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. They didn't Do you think all uh, trouble. how would Star Wars have been different if? Uh, if Darth Vader was like, you know what, that carbon freeze is a stupid idea. Just take Han Solo and go. Like, without Han Solo being frozen, would things have played out differently when he got to, would he just be Jabba's prisoner? Would he kill him? Who knows? Anyway. Hmm. Just, it's or if a, he did uh, kill him. Like, what if, the, what if he didn't survive the freezing process? <clears throat> yeah. I'm like, oh, all right, dead? All right, all right, new plan, plan B. Get out on the gantry. <laughs> the yeah. Yeah. Let's make it a little bit less cold. Let's see Here, uh, here's, let's see, 40, 40 credits? Is that a, 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 what, what, were you, what were you expecting? From? <laughs> Vader's <A> wallet. <laughs> Vader's wallet. Yeah. He gives uh, a picture of Padme in the wallet. Oh, yeah. And a little, like a, like a pod racing schedule. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Pod Seeing racing right. schedule. <laughs> schedule yeah. when, when his favorite racers are playing next. and Yeah. Little punch card of how many sandwiches he has at the Imperial uh, <laughs> right. cafeteria. Two more, and I get a free salad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he just had dinner. Uh, so the mm. the um, the section that we're entering now is sort of like the funeral section. I think mm -hmm. I think this is where we're gonna. I think when Death of a Jedi, the the uh, Qui Gon's noble end. I think the um the thing that he the last line that Vader had there leads into what I was terming the Imperial February. I think so, but but we'll hear it when we get into it because I think it's like a little like. Oh okay uh, okay. I don't know we'll we'll see. I'm excited to hear this Imperial February. <laughs> oh, I'm building it up too much. <laughs> All yours, bounty hunter. Reset the chamber for Skywalker. Skywalker this? just landed, Lord. Mm. A little bit. See to it that he finds his way in here. Cause that. Dun, 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 dun. That's also the. Uh, um, that. Yeah, that's also yeah. the the we see that we hear that with Imperial officers a lot. I think at the beginning more. Interesting. I mean, it's related to many things. It is. If in the catalog it is named as a Bespin dirge mm. melody, and of which there mm. are two, so it would be the top one. And just the description is well, there's we're about to hear the second one too, but it's a pair of linked funereal themes after Carbon Free sequence in Empire Strikes Back, and it is derived harmonically from the Imperial March, and there's an affinity mm. with the Boba Fett motif and the music for the arrival at Bespin. And I mean, the Bespin, all of the Bespin Boba Fett stuff in this movie has this sort of very fast, like oscillating, like mm -hmm. Boba Fett is like, I guess that's not oscillating, but still it's like, yeah. Lots of, Hi. lots totally. of that. Um, and then I guess we'll keep playing. Now, Rizian, take the princess and the Wookiee to my ship. You said they'd be left in the city under my supervision. I am altering the deal. And you can hear the Imperial March in the background. Right. See so if that plays into it. I just totally pictured that without seeing it right now. I know exactly that. That music cue is one of the best. 
It is. Two awesome, two awesome Lobot minutes. <clears throat> There's one later. But Lobot this one. Is, in, is so present. I've mentioned this on a couple other episodes, but I just, I think I forgot how much Lobot actually is in frame. Like yeah. I, in my memory, it's like maybe we saw him a couple times, but now I'm realizing probably, it's way more than a couple. You might have been watching the pan and scan when he was cut there off, you, go. you know, on the... Uh, <laughs> And the, it, uh, term. a thing that uh, Alex and I were just working on a project and, and discovered that, that um, you know, John Hollis had, li- he had the, got the script, he had lines until basically he showed up on set and they were like, hey, you know what? I think we're going to not have you talk. Like, oh. So, like, he, he totally... His big monologue um, was cut. <laughs> yeah. His, but he had, you know, he was expecting lines and there were lines and I... I you know, Lobot is such punctuation in in a couple of especially these scenes that like it's it, hard to imagine what that would be if he was you know standing there talking the whole time. It's probably just like yes, sir, or they hear you know short, right? Short. Yeah. Well, he seemed excited about us. I don't know. Maybe there were yeah. more. I mean, I would be He's excited to be in Star, in Star Wars just to say they're yeah. here. Right. Yeah. He. I wonder why they took them out, but. I, I don't think it was, you know, because of him. I don't think it wasn't working. I think by the time yeah. he showed up, they they had taken them out. They're like, hey, you know what? Mm. They had altered the deal. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. He's like, Lando, they've arrived. And they're ready to land it. They're ready to go. <laughs> oh. Like, okay, you know what? Just just give him a look. Let's just try. Just give him a look. <laughs> yeah, you don't talk so much. Hmm. I have um, this bot on my Discord server that is whenever someone writes a sentence that has the word alter in it, it... It, the bot responds with, "Pray I don't alter it for any further or something." It happens at the most mm-hmm. random times when you're not when you're not meaning to evoke Star Wars at all, but it just mm-hmm. picks up on certain words and has comebacks. Also, "I love you" is another one. It'll say, "I know" mm-hmm. if if you write, "I love you." Mm-hmm. Um, what do you mean by not intending to invoke Star Wars? Yeah, you know, yeah. like on Discord, does, you can do like. Mean? I mean, like, you why could, would you have a sentence that didn't involve Star you, Wars? <laughs> I mean, that's question number one. But yeah. <laughs> assuming, Different let's strokes. just assume that as a, yeah, let's yeah. just assume that as a condition. Um, yeah. Yeah, if you're saying like, I need to alter my clothes or something, it'll be like, pray yeah. I don't alter it any further. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, okay. So you did hear the Imperial March superimposed over that because as you correctly heard, the Imperial February, it does harmonically match on to it. Yeah. And now what I hear there is the Batman's theme. I totally heard the black hole. That one? For me, no. I'm thinking of... That one. Um... Have you yeah, seen the Batman? The the Batman? The new yeah. the, no. I've never think, seen, I haven't seen him. Yeah, the last Batman I saw was Oh no, I did see that that um I did see the Dark Knight, but before that the last one was Batman Returns. Okay. Not counting Lego Batman, which is the best Batman, but <laughs> the theme for the Batman goes what key are we in? Sounds jaunty. Mm. It's, it's much slower. But anyway. Um, that it's just on loop the whole movie, basically, mm. in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I, I caught a little bit of the black hole, John Barry's black hole score. Just just a, a hint of it. I, granted, I'm always looking for black hole references. that to pop up in my life. Yeah, but but that kind of sweeping of the the not the kind of there's two different kind of main themes in that and there's one that was more like kind of the black hole like do 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 this kind of nautical almost like but it has a little bit of like this rolling part before it hmm. that that's that that just that little bit made me think of but granted lots of things make me think of the black hole so it might not be <laughs> might be unfounded but it's always on the perimeter mm-hmm. <laughs> okay I 
forgot about the spurs. Those footsteps. So this is the Bespin Dirge part two. Oh, I love those chords. Okay, those are some really great chords. Let's mm. investigate them a little bit. Um, so the Bespin Dirge, the first part was the... And then this part is, I mean, it really is like a funeral march. Um, with some really great tensions. Um, so what are you? Okay, so I'm looking at the bot. I'm looking at the bottom one. If you're looking on screen, I'm looking at these bottom chords. So it'll be F minor over C. D. Okay. So that just means play an F minor on top of a C. So. And you can see, but okay, before looking at all these complicated chord symbols, okay, I'll narr narrate what they are. All of them have a chord slash C, which means over C. So you can see all of them in a row, even if you don't have any idea what these chords mean, all of them you can C. see are over C, which means that the C is actually going to be a pedal point. And a pedal point is a note that is held, an, an anchor note that is held down. And it comes from like organs have pedals, foot pedals, and hand things that you play. And you chain, you know, as, as an organist, you'll put down a foot pedal. It, pe that's why it's called pedal point. You don't change the pedals as much as you play with your fingers. So basically we're going to have a C underneath all of this. And that's going to be like the basses. It's just going to be droning a C. So you're going to have, and then G flat. G flat five sharp eleven. Okay. G <laughs> Bingo. Attack pattern delta. Go now. That means G flat five sharp eleven. Eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So get the C back on. Mm. And then we're gonna have an E flat diminished. And then a B flat minor. Sorry. And then, of course, we're still over C, so it's it's like this very um, complicated, tense uh, yeah. thing. And then we have both, again, the E flat. And then, uh, so, sorry, this is kind of a failure. Um, no, uh, I can't read this. It's too small. Oh. something yeah I think this is actually there's a typo in I have to tell Frank there's a typo it's the last chord should be E flat minor not E flat major but it's whatever mm. um, it's you can hear all these tensions basically is what I'm saying and it's all over this pedal point of a C so let's hear what that sounds like in context Sorry, we already passed it. <laughs> My bad. Here we go. Footprints. New. There. Yeah, until the point where the shooting happens. Yeah. It almost feels <clears throat> like it resolves when it goes dee, dee, dee. because the sea yeah, is like, oh. Yeah. It's just like a like a little sidebar of tension <laughs> and then back into the sidebar of tension. Yeah. <clears throat> and then That's what I usually get with my Neapolitan emergency. <laughs> bar of tension on the side. Hmm. Um, Best yeah, big dirge. I, yeah. Um, yeah. And then we we cut kind of dramatically. We we cut, um, you know, the tone 
of the whole movie kind of changes because we're going from that. It's like a good transitional. We're going from the the, the dark funeral to the kind of yeah, like you know the the carbon freezing platform to the bright lit hallways of Bespin, and so that music kind of brings us through that. And bit. and how I mean, and how great is just the the shot breaks that sort of it breaks that mood. Yeah. I mean, it's an effective way to just immediately break something without having to figure out a way to finagle it smoothly with the music alone. Sometimes right. just a blaster yeah, shot can do fire it. Fire a gun. Yeah. And so, of course, this is Boba Fett firing at Luke. Mm -hmm. And then we spring immediately into something different. We get the famous line. Did you hear it's a trap. in the background? We heard Yoda's theme. Oh, yeah. Dee, 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 sort of. Hmm. Now we hear it more overtly. Dee, 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 dee. What is... Because he's all yoda the Yoda theme? Yeah. Why? What's the significance of the Yoda theme? Because he is... He's using the force? What's why he, the Yoda He smells theme? like Yoda still, because he just came from, like, <laughs> training on Bespin. With, there was no shower or anything there. So Swamp. <laughs> yeah. Yoda's theme shows, quite, shows up quite a bit here, and I find it really fascinating. I think this is the type of thing that's just up to your interpretation, but in my interpretation, it, Yoda's theme shows up with Luke. Luke is freshly having trained with Yoda, has Yoda's lessons in his head, and also Yoda has been like kind of, <laughs> trust me, you're getting into something bad. Uh, Yoda's mm. kind of like a hovering... Um, I told you so. Not only, hmm. sh yeah, sure, a bit of that, but also there is a bit of Yoda, not guidance necessarily, because Yoda's, you know, can't help you, but a little bit. Like Yoda, the, the spirit of Yoda is still not looking over them, but like, I don't know, there, the force is, is present there, is what it says to me. And also Luke right. is slightly different now. Mm -hmm. Quite different. And it, Luke plus force. I, I, would also like to posit maybe that's what we don't, you know, R2-D2 is beeping. Maybe that's what he's saying. He's like, ah, oh, this is what Yoda was talking about. Come on, come on, let's get out of here. Like, <laughs> and then that's, we're hearing the Yoda theme to help us kind of translate. I don't picture R2 liking Yoda. I don't think he would be eager to prove that Yoda was right. Mm. You know what I mean? Interesting. If but anything, yeah, he'd be like, see, you're right. You were right. You, you don't need that Yoda jerk. Yeah. You know? That dude who hits so, me with a stick. Yeah. Let makes him stand outside in the rain. Come mm. on. Luke is kind of taking Yoda's lessons into this new battle. And I'd say that he is a little bit different. He's not obviously fully, mm, he's not fully realized as a Jedi yet. He's about yeah. to, as my brother said, oh. no, I'm not, I don't want to make this, this episode explicit, but um, this, Luke is going to be humbled greatly. Yeah, right. The force is with him, but he is not a Jedi yet. <laughs> well, I don't, exactly. That's how I. That's how I would phrase also, it personally. Yeah. It could be. Uh, let me go. Uh, maybe it's evocative of the the magic cave because they're like when when he, he he's in danger here. Boba Fett shooting, and the first thing he does is pull his gun, and that was you know going into the magic cave. He pulls his gun. Yoda's like, you don't need that, and so now this is Yoda being like, hey, you don't need that. Like, yeah. in his mind, he's like. Hey, you know, remember your remember failure that, at the cave. Uh, yeah, remember your yeah. failure at the cave. This is this is failure at the cave theme. Yeah, mm. um, it's sort of like when Obi Wan was telling him to turn off his screen or whatever. Right. Um, you spent too much time on screens. Come on, go outside, touch grass. <laughs> <laughs> you young Jedi cannot stay off of your phones. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I will say I will say that the C pedal comes back. See, we hear it in those dee dee dee. It's like dee 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 dee. It's like it, mm. it, it feels like it doesn't really fit with the Otis theme, but the C pedal is the C pedal point is just still being. It's not. It's it's not letting go at this point. <laughs> We're still 
in a, a skirmish. We're still in um, an emergency state here. Emergency. We can't just enjoy Yoda's theme and give in to the magic. Right. The magic um, isn't going to help us. The magic is not going to help us here. Uh, the timbre is quite interesting. We have muted horns and trumpets just with like heavy, with like metal mutes on that make their tone kind of brittle. See the da 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 da. It's muted. That, bah, 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 bah. that part. Yeah, mm. yeah. Right, um, I like that. It's a very Star Warsy sound. Mm. Is it? It kind of is. No, it, it is. It is. Star I Wars associate it with like motion walking picture. around the Death Star. I feel like yeah. there's other mm. sequence like when Obi Wan's sneaking around. There's that kind of yeah, but for maybe sure. Maybe I'm misremembering. No, I think you're. I think you're remembering correctly. And then here we're gonna have a strings and piano call and response. Hmm. <clears throat> Timpani as well. It's kind of a nice little yeah. interstitial material. A cat, cat and mousey because there's people chasing people. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I very few times I can identify a piano in Star Wars. Mm. Oh. Hmm. I would say There's, interesting. It, the Battle of Hoth has many pian piano? has two pianos. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had to leave them behind though because they couldn't fit in the transports. <laughs> well, the they, they had plenty Hoth. of time to hang do the smaller modules. Right. Yeah. The Battle of Hoth really heavily features piano, but you're not the first person who has been surprised by that. But then, as soon as I played it, they're like, "Oh, now I'm not going to unhear it." The thing is, yeah. we're used to hearing piano. Uh, play in a more moderate register. Yeah. Here we're hearing the piano go like, like mm. orchestral piano sounds often sounds a lot different from like solo piano like. or piano in a obviously piano context because the piano will fill in often parts of the orchestra where the in, where the other instruments can't. So the piano has a huge range. It can go this low. And it can go also really up high. So it, I, I feel like I often hear piano in this score on one extreme or the other. Mm, that would make sense. They have 40 instruments and they still need a piano to fill in stuff that no one else can do. <laughs> well, like the violin... <laughs> Like, yeah. I think I think this is a pretty low note where it's only <laughs> it's only here on the piano. It's only there yeah. on the piano. And then the lowest yeah. cello note is only and the piano can go Yeah, it's pretty totally it's pretty down there. Totally yeah. should have done exactly that when Luke walks in. <laughs> 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 um, um, okay, we have about 30 seconds left, and it's going to be so yoded out. I'm excited. Here we go. <laughs> See? Yoda. Yoda. All Yoda. Mm. I'm going to interpret the Yoda theme as it being sort of from Luke's perspective. Because Luke's all like, I'm all yoda out now. I can fight. I can do all this cool stuff. Even though that's not what Yoda was trying to get through to him. And, you know, right. he's yeah. doing the complete opposite of that. So I feel like it's because he feels like Yoda is with him, even though it's right. fake. It's like, yeah, hey, I got all this training. I'm going to totally use it. And then it just totally falls apart. It's yeah. like, bah, bah, bah. yeah. When it's like if you're away, riding a horse away. and in your head you hear the William Tell overture because you're riding on a horse. Mm. So you're like, oh, this is so cool. I'm riding a horse. Like, William, you know, like the low range. you fall off and it's like, bah, 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 bah. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Next I'm time a, yeah. you ride a horse, I. <laughs> I'm not riding a horse. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Next time someone rides a horse, <laughs> think of the Canto Bite music for the Father Years. Um, oh really? I that's, that's oh I cruel. really like that track, <laughs> do, 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 do. and it's very William Tell esque. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, um, 
Yeah, no, I, I like that interpretation. And I, I think there's especially the point at which Yoda's theme becomes really swashbuckly here. Yeah. It really reminds me of like Luke swinging across the chasm in episode four where yeah. it gets all it gets all swashbuckly. And here, mm -hmm. it's at this point um, in a second. It's at 437. You have the French horns. Here, dotted, Yeah. And the strings, it's, um, yeah, it's almost like, all right, Luke, you're not really reading the room, but I appreciate the energy. Different music, but kind of uh, um, same feeling as like, let's say like, like the Millennium Falcon flying between TIE fighters and stuff like that, because like, that, Evocative of that kind of spirit. Yeah. It, High adventure. It is. It is. Mm -hmm. High adventure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, as a viewer, it also does kind of tell me, like, things are going to be all right-ish, within reason. They'll be all right within... They're not going to be all mm. right, but they'll, everyone will be alive, probably, and there will be some heroics, probably. Um, and there are. Uh, so the... The swashbuckling Yoda goes from <laughs> like the French horns playing uh, sort of in a dotted rhythm here. <laughs> now the strings, and now here it changes where the horns are now, rather than being kind of stacked in, you know, multiple notes playing at the same time, um, now they are in, they're in unison and it sounds really clear. Um, you can hear sort of the coalesc coalescing of that theme here. Right here. It's like uncomplicated. Right. And then the harmony, that part, that part reminds me of Back to the Future. Um, totally, yeah. <laughs> but usually uh, Yoda's theme would be harmonized. Let's see. So going from D to E. And instead it's going from D mm. to D flat. It's kind of a nice... It's it's similar enough that it's not like a major harmony change, but it gives it a kind of a new flavor. I think. I don't know. It's it's fun. Yeah. It's and it all, I mean, <clears throat> yeah. And, and I I love that you know it f ties into the fact that it just you know builds and is adventure and then is cuts off because and totally should have like a whoa whoa whoa, whoa or like you know. Some kind of sad, like not not quite sad trombone, not like, burp, 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 but like, <laughs> as soon as they get away, and he's just, and it like cuts to like nothing because then it's like, oh, there's his chance to rescue. Her. Like, I forget because it's so much part of our, you know, I didn't know how stories worked really before I watched The Empire Strikes Back a million times. That you know how much of a kind of, you know, you're expecting especially the way that Star Wars was so kind of traditional narrative that you're expecting, oh, part two, and having it build up and Luke comes in and rescues everybody and then here it just, like, doesn't. Here he just, that's, he just goes, the next time he sees these guys, he's hanging off an antenna, you know, yeah. they're rescuing him. And, like, that kind of, that's where it just totally swerves and it becomes, like, not the, 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 you know, swashbuckling hero story that you might be expecting. Yeah, like subverts expectations. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, <clears throat> and and I forget that that like how much of that, you know, like like um, what's it called? Uh, in, uh, Infinity War too, same like deal where it's just like oh, you're expecting the heroes to kind of save the day and defeat the villain, and then like oh no, like when, no spoilers, I guess for Infinity War and Empire Strikes Back, <laughs> um, that like when things don't work out, it's you've you f might forget that feeling because these things are so ex like part of pop culture, part of the zeitgeist, part of the conversation. Then it's just like, oh, but 
like I just watched Empire Strikes Back a million times before I had any thoughts about how stories were supposed to work and stuff like that. So I, it doesn't affect me, but I can put myself in the shoes of somebody really liking Star Wars and going to see this and being like, wait, what? Wait, how is he not? Why, why did, why is he not saving the day? You know what I mean? And get, yeah. getting thrown for a loop there. Yeah. A loop. And the music evokes that by it's doing the hero music and then just. Bah, 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 bah. Yeah. I like the deflation of uh, Luke's hero moments. I mean, in general in this movie, but the music kind of <laughs> trails out like that. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Well, we are at the end of the minutes. Um, mm, it's a trap. It's a trap. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I have any more notes on the sound design. Let's see. Let's see the... Oh, what do you think the... We talked about this in my in the last episode, but what do you think that... thing is? How do you think they did in, that? With the, mean, the, when the, with the carbon, yeah. Free, carbon freeze? Yeah. To me, it sounds like one of those, um, <clears throat> like at an auto mechanic, they use those things to unscrew nuts, sort of, mm. you know what I mean? It like pulls, it's like a sp- high speed way of removing yeah. bolts from tires and things. <coughs> Does it do, do that high pitched thing at the end? Um, oh, I, I feel I think, like, like it, when it spins out, like if it's not. I, it, definitely in the right ballpark, I think, with that kind of machine. Because I think that's hydraulic. So I think some kind of like hydraulic or, or air powered, the pneumatic or hydraulic, or whatever. But there's definitely some hydraulic. of that going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, I, I also kind of think of, you know, that, that kind of just big industrial machinery running on the same principles of either, um, or, or even like a, like a garbage truck, the little compactor thing on the back of a garbage truck can have that kind of vibe sometimes. Oh, okay. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Um, although I think that's more of like the legs from the from the Imperial Walker, that kind of like... Yeah, that's like true. The, it is that. That and the trash that, factor. Yeah, but that that kind of same principles mechanically, but applied to something else, like 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 what Alex said, either like a... that What is that, a ratchet or something like that? That's... Um, something a mechanic would use. Yeah. Yeah. Something in the mechanical realm sounds, it sounds very plausible. Knowing that they, knowing that Ben Burt would just record random mechanical stuff yeah, everywhere. Right. Now um, we're going to go look it up and it's like, oh no, it's a hyena. Okay. But like, I don't even know how to describe what that, do you know, okay, do you know what that part it is, is called? Just the carbon freezing. Like the little ramp. calipers that pull it caliper? out? Caliper? Kind of. <laughs> Maybe caliper. caliper. Okay. Pincers? I'll look that up. Pincers. Pincers. I like that. It's just a giant. the The reveal is it's just like a giant space beetle. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, this this Ben Burt's podcast is sounding more and more like a plausible Same. thing. <laughs> it is how all these so we need to get him on board. It needs to be official. We got to go through channels. Yeah, yeah. It has to be Ben Burt. It can't be any other sound. Oh yeah, no, no, it has to no. be Ben Burt. No, it has to be right. Ben Burt. Has to be. Yeah, yeah. It has to be. Yeah. Um, anyway, Although, you, if oh. you bring it forward, you know, you can get Matthew Wood on some of the modern stuff. You could be like, hey, what is this? For sure, but, you could. But, but you'd digital, have to have Ben like, Bird first. Yeah. yeah, but it's still made out of stuff. They don't just like, I don't know. I, yeah, definitely Ben, mostly Ben Burt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, right. I would like someone from every, like, gener- yeah. not, generation's not the right, right word. I just mean, like, so we have, like, a clear lineage of who Ben Burt passed his work on to so that we mm. know, you know, everyone has the person... Like they don't know the answer, but they know the person before them who would know the answer, type of thing. Got it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it'll, it'll be like a Doctor Who crossover with all the sound people from mm. all the different eras in, hanging out together at the same time. That would be very popular. Right. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> um, while they're all still alive. Yeah. Mm. We have to. Um, well, okay. Now you, know, now you know Ben Burt's going to die before this no. episode comes no. out. So, uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be so horrible. Podcast. <laughs> That'd be awful. Um, yes. Okay, so um, the the cues from this set of minutes were it, were basically in nine M six slash ten M one carbon freeze. There also is an insert bar. That's just one bar. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's also, am I, I correct in bar. listing this in my notes? Beginning of Luke pursues the captives. It's hard to tell for me because it's all kind of running together in in 
you know, the, there's a lot of slashes in the queue, like just like in the soundtrack. There's, we're in only in the first bit of this track, which is 11 minutes and 50 seconds. Wow, um, that is long. Yeah. Uh, the musical themes we heard were the Imperial March theme, the Han and Leia A section, Neapolitan Emergency, Bespin Dirge 1, Bespin Dirge 2, and Yoda's theme A section. And then in the soundtrack, this is Carbon Freeze slash Darth Vader's Trap slash Departure of Boba Fett. Hmm. Yeah. Do you all have any final notes on this set of minutes or the music and sound in this film before I ask you the questionnaire again? Uh, I can't think of anything. No. I think we. Who decides how long the tracks are? Is that a John Williams decision? Is that the soundtrack producer's decision? Probably the latter, but I heard that the first Empire Strikes Back release, John Williams selected and ordered the tracks himself, I think. Oh. And it was missing some. Right. But yeah. That nails all my questions. Those are my <laughs> questions, Your Honor. <laughs> um, great. Pete, did your thing, did your question get, you said that you had something to bring up that you brought up eight years ago, but you. <clears throat> It was the it was the oh the wind sound tube. the wind tube yeah. okay cool 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 okay well I'm gonna ask you the Star Wars music minute questionnaire um and the first question is in exactly three words what does Star Wars sound like and mm. any one of you can go first and some people elephant, who are repeat elephant guests elephant on blacktop oh, <laughs> that's what, oh that's okay what I'll go with. <laughs> Elephant nice. on blacktop. Now, should we be? Can we tailor it? Should we tailor it to this movie specifically? I was going to say that's what as a whole? that's what some people have been doing, who have been on multiple seasons, sort of to focus themselves. Hmm. Yeah, it's so funny because I'm so fixated now on those ugnots gibbering <laughs> that I'm, yeah. I can't get any other thought in my head other than that. <laughs> but you uh, think that they sound like elephants on blacktop? No, no, no. I, that was more of the tie because that's the tie fighter oh, sound, oh, oh, right? right. Is it right, something yeah. like wet, wet a car going on wet blacktop with an elephant shrieking? Yeah, yeah. I'll say to me, okay. Empire Strikes Back. I will say um, uh, Imperial Walker clanking. Mm. Uh, so I think of the Imperial Walker. Similar. Thing. I was, was going to tie that into what we were just talking about so between oh, yeah? the walkers and the carbon freeze. I was going to say like pneumatic machinery sounds. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's good, yeah. Definitely very mechanical sounding, which is appropriate mm. because the Empire is striking back. The Empire is the one that's mm-hmm. all mechanical and robotic. So. That we're raging yeah. against. <clears throat> Welcome. You both have, uh, I mean, Alex, your old answers were majestic French horns and mm. choo-choo-choo. And mm. Pete, your previous answers were Aunt Beru's Kitchen <laughs> and Shortwave kitchen. Radio. So yeah. you're really honed in on the, on the sound of, I don't know, I don't know if radios are a mechanical thing or not. Are they? <laughs> no, yeah. they're not. They used to be. Bruce, okay. Bruce Kitchen is definitely a mechanical thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. Question number two. What is something related to Star Wars music or sound that you are intrigued by, curious about, wouldn't mind knowing more about? Well, I want to say, <clears throat> to keep, keep in the sound section, I'd want to say, what is it with Ben Burt? What is that <laughs> with Ben Burt? That's what I want to know. I want every single ben like Burt. thing. Like, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> That's the name of the show. What is that yeah. with Ben Burt? What Bert? is that with Ben Burt? <laughs> <laughs> I'll say uh, Ugnaught. Uh, what, so yeah, what what are the Ugnaught uh, noises? Cool. That would be my my question that I would want answered. I really want that answered too. I have posited mm. the question. I've posed the question in a couple previous episodes. No one has no one has revealed the answer to me yet. So come on, yeah. someone. With a just text Ben, just text Ben Burt or right. something. Um, okay, finally, what is a score or soundtrack you're fond of besides anything Star Wars? I feel like last time I said the black hole, right? <laughs> you said that yeah. the first time. Yep. Mm. So <clears throat> soundtrack that is not Star Wars? Mm-hmm. Oh. Um. Oh. What did you know? I can't. So you previously, Alex, said Superman, composed by John Williams, and Magnolia. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Amy mm-hmm. Man. Yeah. And Pete said the Black Hole and Fight Club. Oh, that was going to be my backup. I was like, hey, you know what? Good Fight Club. 
Um, I'm trying to think of ones I'm that stumped. I have. Oh, you know what? You know, still sci-fi, but different. But different. Um, I, I am impressed often with the feelings conveyed by um, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Hmm. Ah. Is that a movie? That, it or is. Show? It's the, sec- oh. the, the second Star Trek original cast movie. Well, the second Star Trek movie altogether. <clears throat> um, and it's got a really good, like, parts of it, just like this, parts of it very much tie into my brain in terms of, you know, what's going on on screen. Like, hearing it is very evocative of what's happening on a screen or what, what the dialogue is being said at times. And so, um, I'll, I'll go with that. Cool. Alex? Uh, uh, well, along the lines of what I said Magnolia last time, I will say uh, the soundtrack to the Royal Tenenbaums. Oh. Not music that is, you know, created specifically for a movie. So, I don't know. It's, you know, it's a similar, not quite the same. Uh, but I will say that. Um, Do you have a favorite track on it? I like it too. Um, are you talking about the song, like the collection of songs, or the score? I guess the collection of songs. I couldn't. Okay. The the, the one that has Nico and yeah uh, everything on it. Yeah. So I'll say "These Days" by Nico. My brother uh, does not like that N- Nico's interpretation of "These Days." Hmm. So, uh, Oh. I feel like a lot of these songs, it's the one you hear first, is the one you're going to like the best. Yeah. And then, yeah, I, I feel like just in the last like two or three years, I realized that everybody was talking about some other guy's version of Hallelujah. Uh-huh. You're talking Leonard about Ben Cohen. Buckley? Or new, another yes. one? Yes. No, I don't know. The, it's a Leonard Cohen song. And that right, I right, just right. figured everybody was talking about Leonard Cohen, but no, they're talking about, would you say Ben Buckley? Yeah. I don't know, but, but I discovered that, like, wait a minute, oh, okay, everybody knows this other version instead, all right. <clears throat> yeah. Not oh, that yeah, that's to be... definitely the first one I knew. Okay. Although, now I'm questioning whether Ben Buckley is the right name. Jeff Buckley. Does, oh, yeah, my Jeff God, Buckley. I knew okay. something Doesn't was wrong. sound right. Yeah, Jeff yeah. Buckley. Um, ben Kenobi, Jeff Buckley. Um, yeah, the Royal Tenenbaums. <laughs> Jeff Kenobi. I, I totally want to see Jeff, Jeff Kenobi. Kenobi. It's like Obi-Wan. Jeff Kenobi. Jeff Kenobi. Jeff <laughs> um, the Royal Tenenbaums he has, old Jeff. <laughs> in addition to having like a bunch of classic rock songs from the 60s, I mm-hmm. think, uh, maybe 80s, um, there is a, a string quartet on there by Ravel, which is kind of toward the beginning of the movie. It has all the pizzicato. And I, I, I like that. It made me want to play that piece. And then I did play the piece. Mm-hmm. It's kind of one of those rare-ish for me moments where I saw the movie and heard a piece of classical music before having played the classical music first and then heard it in the movie, where the movie made me want to play the piece. Oh. Usually it's the opposite, where it's like, yeah. oh, I've played that, I hear it. Um, but yeah, the Royal Tenenbaums made me want to play that. Hmm. So, Another that soundtrack I liked uh, that I enjoyed recently was uh, the Shining soundtrack. Mm, yeah. Recently? <clears throat> you mean you just recently watched it again? No, no, I recently was playing the soundtrack while I was while I was doing stuff. It has that kind of, I don't know if I forget the guy's name. It's like Greek sounding name, like Lagos or something. Oh, the, um, anyway. Right. For this, you, you're talking about the, the Jack Nicholson movie? Yeah. yeah. The music? There's, it, it was it Wendy is, Carlos. But there's some of the, the other, we talked about this with, with oh, Susan Vangelis? when we did The Shining. No, there's another, um, uh, I'm assuming Pete is loud looking it up. I'm looking it up, yeah. Um, it's a very distinctive kind of or uh, style where it's almost like like almost like one note sustained. Penderecki? Um, nope. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> Greek, though? You said Greek? It's. I feel like it's like... It, <laughs> I feel it's not. I don't think this is it, but I feel like the name is something like L Y G O S. Oh, something. Ligeti. Is well, that yeah, it? Ligeti, Ligeti. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah. Ligeti. There's oh, only one yeah, okay. track on the on the original soundtrack. Yeah, but but it's okay. throughout the movie. I think like on the actual released soundtrack that, that came out, there's only one on there because I don't think it makes for good rec- listening if you're you know if you're just sitting. Yeah. I mean, around. it does, but it's also not. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> they wanted to put on the more kind of tonal stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Anyway, um, so there you go. At least yeah. I have a different yeah. one. 2001 A Space Odyssey also uses some Ligeti. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that would, that would make sense. 
Wow, that's a deep, that's a deep cut. Um, Liggety, yeah. Okay, well, that is. Um, I guess that's all we have for this episode. What is up in Pete and Alex land at the moment that you have going on? Yeah, working well, on, on the new season sooner or later. Yeah, the rise of Skywalker. The, mm-hmm. Yes, we were on the eve of releasing uh, the the new season, so mm-hmm. people should go to find Star Wars Minute wherever you find your podcasts, or go to StarWarsMinute.com. And if so, is this, um, are we what, are we dropping this soon? Is this coming out before Celebration? Because we're going to be at Celebration. When is Celebration again? Uh, first uh, weekend April, of April, I think fifth. Oh, I think London, this will, England. I think this might come out right around, right before then, maybe. So, mm-hmm. yeah, right. if you're listening to this and you can make it out to, you can make it out to England. Yeah, yeah, check it out. <laughs> yeah, just do just that. Spur of the moment, be like, oh, they're going to be there. Just drop everything yeah. and get out there. Yeah, hop on the tube. Might as well, mm-hmm. I'm sure you have some British listeners. I'm sure there are people living who, who oh, listening yeah. who live in London right now. So. But still, getting yeah. celebration tickets that might be the challenge. That's um, true. Are you presenting? You do. Yeah, we're doing a um, uh, at the the podcast stage, the whatever nice. they're calling it, the hyper something stage for for, for yeah. podcasters and and YouTubers. They've kind of expanded it now, I think. Oh. But YouTubers. What are you in. talking? About? What are you going to podcast about? We're just going to do some minutes, <clears throat> a minute from, probably from from, 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 from Walker. Rise of Skywalker. That's what we're up to. Oh, nice. Okay, nice. <laughs> That's fun. Yes. So. Uh, Man, I wish yeah. I could be there. Uh, hopefully, it's recorded. No, it will be recorded. So, I will be uh, yeah, actually we, we able will, to hear you. Well, you will put it on your podcast. Hopefully, we will record it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Now that um, we've just jinxed it. Yeah. Oh no. Well, I will not be at we'll celebration. We'll transcribe it just in case at the same time. So. Good. Good. Someone get their notepad, please. Yeah. Um, I won't be at celebration, but I will be here. Uh, I will be here on the internet, on the podcast feed, on YouTube, as usual. Um, if you want to support the show, you can join my Patreon and join my Discord server as a result of joining my Patreon um, at any level. And then uh, I'll just put a link in the show notes to social media. Who knows what social media is still salient at the time that you're listening to this. Um, Jingo. Yeah. But Pete and Alex recently, you recently have a, a Discord server as well for Star Wars Minute. So Yes. If people so want to join to their Discord server as well, check out their Patreon Members page. of our Patreon, yeah. Yeah, it's fun times. You should get that bot that tells you, pray mm. I don't alter it further. We well, got to make mm. a 94 and long time box. That's long true, time. you do. You do. 94, yeah. <laughs> 94. Well, anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's all I have for today. Uh, may the force be with you. Thanks for listening to Star Wars Music Minute. <laughs> <laughs>